Ever wondered what parts of the body are involved in sleep? Well, it's not just the eyelids, if that's what you're thinking. There are quite a few structures within the brain that play a really important role in sleep. And in this video, I'm gonna break it down and tell you five important structures of the brain and what they do for our sleep. And hopefully with this education, you can build better sleeping habits. My name is Sarah Jeffries. I'm a registered nurse with a Master's of Science in Nursing, experience in ER, education, and sleep therapy. So let's start with number five the hypothalamus. This is a peanut-sized gland deep inside the brain that contains nerves that act as control centers affecting sleep and waking up. Within the hypothalamus is the suprachiasmatic nucleus, SCN. This is a cluster of millions of tiny cells that receive information about light exposure directly coming into the eyes, and this helps form the basis of the circadian rhythm. This is why it's recommended that you get some light in your eyes as soon as you wake up. Now this certain type of early morning yellow and blue ray light has so, so many proven health benefits. And also the SCN has connections to essentially every cell and organ in your body. At number four, we have the brainstem. This is at the base of the brain and communicates with the hypothalamus to control the transitions between wake and sleep. The brainstem includes structures called the pons, the medulla, and the midbrain. Sleep promoting cells within the hypothalamus and the brainstem produce a brain chemical called GABA, GABA amino butric acid. This is a naturally occurring amino acid that works like the brakes on a car to slow down the nervous system and promote a sense of calm, which is important when you're trying to go to sleep. And number three, we have the thalamus. This acts as a relay for information from the senses to the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the actual brain and that interprets and processes information from short to long-term memory. During most stages of sleep, the thalamus becomes quiet and lets you tune out the external world. But during REM sleep, the thalamus is active and and it sends the cortex images, sounds, and other sensations that fill our dreams. This video is for educational purposes only and not a replacement for medical treatment or advice. At number two, we have the pineal gland. This is located within the brain's two hemispheres. It receives signals from the SCN and increases the production of the hormone melatonin, which helps you go to sleep once the lights go down. Scientists believe that peaks and valleys of melatonin over time are important for matching the body's circadian rhythm to the external cycles of light and darkness. Before we talk about the last one, please let me know in the comments down below any questions you have about sleep or any general health topics, I'd be happy to talk to you. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos on sleep and health. At number one, we have the amygdala. This is an almond-shaped structure involved in processing emotions, and this becomes increasingly active during REM sleep. This is why sometimes in your dreams, it feels like you've been crying. Well, because you might actually have really been crying, all thanks to the amygdala. When somebody is sleep deprived, there's a deficit that happens between the amygdala and something called the ventral anterior cingulate cortex, VACC for short, which can result in a decreased mood and can cause the amygdala to have a heightened response to negative stuff going on the next day. Click here if you want to know how to wake up feeling fresh as a daisy.